So, uh, this is a VIC-20 that I bought. Um, not sure if it... Uh, I think the guy said that the, uh, uh, the lights come on, but there is no video. But he, is he using the correct connector uh, or the correct video input on the TV or such? So, let's first... I already opened that, but let's take a look. Anyway... I already made some changes, so I've put some heat sinks. Uh, I, in fact, I already solved the problem uh, with this one, but I'm gonna recreate the process that I took to uh, arrive at the correct answer. First, there is no fuse here, so I have a fuse, a spare fuse, one amp, 120. 5 volt or 250 uh, 125 volt 1 amp yeah it's it says 1 amp on the on the board so that's one thing taken care we'll connect the video out and a power supply so let's uh, try to measure voltage here from ground 5 volt Five volt. So there is five volt everywhere, and the Vic Twenty is is running at five five volt. Anyway, so everything seems to be good on the power side. Um, okay, so um, there is no picture. If I turn it on, turn it off, I, I hear uh, a sound from the speaker, a talk, but. There is no picture, so let's try to connect the logic probe. One of those caps, yeah. Those caps are for filtering, so there's a plus five there. Probe. So that works. Yeah. So let's bring, let's bring the. 7502 <coughs> pin out. So let's try the address lines. So every address line is low. So the processor is not doing anything. And then the data lines are floating. And uh, um, I think pin 37 is the clock. So 40. 39, 38, 37. So there is no activity from the clock. Let's take out the schematic. So what I was thinking is that there is no clock coming out. There should be a clock on pin 39 and 30, 38 of the VIC chip, which is which is this one. So 40, 39, 38. There is an I on 38 and nothing on 39. So something is wrong here. So first thing, we'll try to change this, this chip. So let's turn off the computer. Take out that chip. That's it. And it's a <clears throat> 8302. It's a Mitsubishi. It's equivalent to a Texas Instrument 7402. So pin one up there, pin one up there. Let's try to put this back here. Okay, every pin is inside there. Let's power up again. Oh! And we have a screen, we have a, a working computer, but just for the fun of it, pin 37, so 40, 39, 38, 37. So 37 now has a good clock signal. So that's with a logic probe. Let's try again with the scope. 
let's look at the clock signal on the CPU 37 and it is a good signal square wave little ripple there but that's not too uh, too worrisome 5 volt 5.4 5.36 volt this is what it looked like when I got it so the video level is um, too low it should be about about 7 microvolt from the black to the white so let's bring this up a bit so there is a difference of uh, 664 millivolt which is okay I could go a little higher it's bleeding out on the letters so let's bring it down a bit so I'm gonna go until I don't see the vertical bars here and here that's about here which is 660 millivolts which is correct so that is taking care of the video output now let's try to do a test I've assembled from a Sven Peterson design or redesign of the diagnostic cartridge that was used by technician repairing the VIC 20s. So I have a card which is from Dick Dick Dom on GitHub. Let's turn off the computer first, which has on it four programs. It has the diagnostic program NTSC PAL and two games. I'm printing a, a white case for uh, everything. This, and this, and the, and the disc port, and this one on the joystick. And this little one, uh, the correct way, on the keyboard, which connects here. That's it. So let's try to do a full, let's bring you on this, a full diagnostic to see if it will pass. Ah, it has a good, a good image. So run test one is okay. And this is as a, this has memory also, so I think it's a 20, 28k of RAM, so maybe the, the RAM test is a little longer. So cassette port is not okay. Why? Uh, I think the fuse was is blown. Mm. What did I do? Yeah, the fuse is blown, so that is the AC voltage for the cassette port. So let's uh, some more. Yes, I think I shorted out uh, sometime. So a new fuse. Let's connect back here and try again. Guess it bad again. Oh, the shoes is blown again what's happening so the cassette port will report bad if the fuse is blown because I think it's about the the only place where the AC voltage from the power supply goes to the cassette port so let's see let's see if we see a 
the motor. No, it's bad again. And I think it's it's blowing the fuse right away. Have a short somewhere or something. Maybe. Let's take out the <clears throat> Let's take out the shield. For now. Then. Put this there. Is there anything underneath? No. Another fuse. Okay. Number three. Yeah. So probably something was shorting out on the on the shield on the metal shield. So it seems to work now after so many fuses. Okay, good. Now let's try a game. I think I have a Galaxian and. I joined the tank. Let's dis let's disconnect harness that joystick connect the keyboard and because I think I have to push some keys. This uh, Okay, turn on. Now let's see. Oh, yeah. F1, start game. And this is a Wiko. A joystick from that I used when I had the Commodore 64 and Commodore Vic 20. Works! Cool!